Hey guys, uh, I just wanted to announce that I'm starting a Patreon app, patreon.com slash jomar100101. As you can see on the on the link on the screen or in the description very below. Uh, it's obviously not mandatory, but if you want to go and support me, you can. Yeah, uh, You can see what perks are available there if you click the link. Uh, if you want to support, I appreciate it very much. If you don't, then that's fine regardless of what. Uh, on to the video. It was my first year at university, completely new to the cities and its surroundings. One evening, my friend and I decided to take a trip to the mall. It was 8pm and we got on a bus that my friend claimed would take us to the mall. We ended up at an empty bus terminal and it was around 10 at that time. We waited and waited for another bus back and there was no one there but us. A while later, an old man walked by and told us since it's so late, another bus won't be coming for an hour or so. He told us to turn and walk down the road and we'll find a bus stop in the middle where a bus will soon come. We followed his instructions and entered this single lane road with tall trees on each side. There were only a few street lamps working so the area was dimly lit. The road was sort of built on a slant, our bus stop was in the middle, so we could see all the way up the road and down the road, and it was a single lane road. All we could see was the road and trees on either side for at least half a kilometer on each side. Anyway, so we're waiting and waiting. My phone battery has died and my friend has forgotten hers in her dorm room. We were starting to think there won't be any bus coming and started to panic. Then as we were waiting. I turn around and see two kids with backpacks walking down the road. I was relieved to see them and so was my friend. When they were close by, I asked them if they knew about any buses coming. There were two kids, maybe around 12 to 13. One was a boy and the other was a girl. Both had backpacks. Here's our conversation. Not exact, but close. Me. Hey, do you know if there's any buses coming? Boy. Let me check takes phones out, walks towards the bus sign, but it's empty and doesn't say the timing nor the stop number, just a picture of a bus. I knew this from before. Me, the timings aren't there and there's no number to text either, I've looked at it before. Boy, still looking at phone. Oh, it's okay, your bus will be here in 10 minutes, I think. Meanwhile, during this conversation, my friend started talking to the girl. Girl, where are you guys from? Friend. We just started university here, what about you? Girl. Oh, we're in school and we're just going back home from school. Friend, oh, okay. After the boy told me that the bus would be here in 10 minutes, I turned my head to tell my friend this, turned my head back to thank the boy and he was gone. Gone. The girl and the boy were nowhere to be seen. I literally probably looked away for a second, max. We both looked down the road, up the road, and by the trees. They had a fence around them, but even if they went there, we would have seen them. I literally looked away for a second. Needless to say, both of us were scared as hell until our bus arrived. It was the last bus and it was around 12.17am when the bus came. I know because we asked the time from the bus driver. I asked my brother about the area later and I didn't tell him what happened. He said that there's a graveyard there. And then it hit me, what the hell would two 13 year olds be doing in the middle of fucking nowhere coming back from school at midnight? I didn't believe in paranormal activities, but I can't seem to find an explanation for this one. I was at a friend's dinner party once when he revealed that one of the guests was a respected psychic. I'm a huge skeptic and this probably isn't going where you think it is, so read on. I swear every word I am about to type is true and there were many witnesses. The psychic agreed to do a reading for us. We were all in the living room, maybe 20 or so people. She began with the expected stuff we think of when we think of a psyche doing a cold reading. I had a few drinks and was pretty feeling pretty loose, so I was just observing and waiting for her to do anything interesting that an observant person or someone trained in cold reading couldn't do. About 20 minutes into it, she stopped and said, Okay. There's a stronger power than mine in here, and it needs to be acknowledged. 
I perked up thinking things were about to get interesting. She said anyone who had anything to say should speak up. She asked us to let us look around the room and allow ourselves to see one another clearly and looking into each other's eyes. If we all felt impressed to tell someone something, we should. I will admit that I felt a little drawn towards a woman I had never met. Her name was Tammy. I didn't say anything. The room was silent and the silence got awkward. Like when a teacher waits overly long for a student to respond to a question she or he clearly doesn't know. So she probed again. Somewhere here has a strong gift and needs to tap into it. There are messages waiting to be heard. If you feel drawn to someone, say so. There was another silence. Then she looked right at me and said, Oh my god, it's you. You are, you are a gifted empath. You must speak. I blushed and kind of laughed it off, but several of the guests insisted that I must speak my mind. So I said I was feeling drawn towards Tammy. The psychic asked me to let my guard down. Reach out with your mind, she said. So I tried to let my mind go blank. Suddenly I could hear the journey song, Don't Stop Believing in my head. Not my usual stuff. Then I started to feel sad. I'm normally a pretty happy guy, and this odd wave of sadness just came over me. At the same time, the name Mark came into my mind, followed by an urge to tell Tammy thank you. I didn't know what to do. The psychic just told me to start talking, describe what I was experiencing. So I did. I closed my eyes and started to talk. As I got to the thank you part, I started to choke up and cry a little, like I was actually feeling extreme gratitude. I opened my eyes and Tammy was as white as a ghost. Her friend Mark had died in the early 90s from complications with AIDS. She had been the only person in his friend group to visit him, and she did so regularly. The song had been their pep song, and she said Mark had died unexpectedly after seeming to have rallied a bit. Tammy was trembling. I, I was shaken. The psychic was smiling and the guests were all staring at me. A bevy of questions followed, almost none of which I could answer. I've always relied on my gut, but I had never had that specific of an experience before. I do not believe in an afterlife, and as I said earlier, I've always been a huge skeptic. I couldn't explain what had just happened. Others asked me to read for them. I didn't know what to do, and was frankly a bit weirded out. The psychic told me to hold people's hands and look deep into their eyes. That night, I told a man I'd never met that Sharon, the woman that allowed her friends to pay her for the right to molest him as a boy, was sorry and in torment. This huge, burly man crumpled into a pile and said he had never told anyone about that ever in his life, and that I had even nailed her physical description. I told a young woman I had never met that the relationship she was in was not working because she was too focused on wanting a child and that the stress was causing her not to become pregnant and making her act out in anger towards her husband. She left in anger because people had been talking about her behind her back and told me her secrets. That was not the case. All total, there were about five instances out of six attempts that night that were dead on. The one that did not work was my partner. Nothing I said was right. I was left very, very perplexed by the whole night. So, being a student researcher, I decided to explore it. I worked the summer with the psychic, who I have befriended since then, on exploring things I do not understand. She determined that I am, she believes, indeed an empath, and that I can feel, read, or interpret emotions from people that allow my intuition to put together stories. She also believes that the world is full of emotional impressions slash scars that empaths can feel their echoes. Since then, I have determined that I am indeed able to do something unusual. I don't do it as a hobby, I don't make money off of it. To be honest, I do it as a I've had one too many drinks party trick because that's about how seriously I take it. However, I do it on one on one now because I've discovered one too many uncomfortably personal things people don't want everyone in earshot to know. Here's what works best for me to read someone. The expectation is that I will tell them something they need to hear and that they do not tell me anything be about themselves or what they hope to hear. It works best when the person is an absolute stranger. I ask for an item that they usually have on their person often, so a favorite ring, someone's glasses, etc. It has to be something they have touched upon, often. 
I've found the absolute best results to come from pillows people often sleep on. I will spend 5 to 10 minutes holding the object in silence, allow my mind to wander, and then I will ask for the person's hand. Then I just talk. I let my mind wander, and I talk. About 90% of the time, when I open my eyes again, they are staring at me in disbelief, crying or smiling an uh, incredulous smile. I don't understand it. I don't get it. I do like doing it, but it challenges my beliefs to the core. I was in my dad's office at his old house around 1 in the morning. Uh, let me give you the layout. Once you open the door to walk out of the office, you have a direct view of the hallway in front of you, and that connects to the stairs to the second floor. I was playing Halo CE online, and I heard a bouncing ball being thrown from the stairs, hitting each stair on the way down to the tile floor. It was unusual because I knew no one was upstairs at the time. My little brother was in the den area watching TV, my older brother was on the couch asleep, and my parents were in the bedroom asleep. I assumed one of my brothers happened to go upstairs for some reason, and along the way they kicked a ball or something. So I just continued to play Halo. Well, I hear it again, but this time it bounces all the way down the hallway and hits the door which was closed. I got mad because I didn't want my brothers to wake my parents because I just didn't feel like hearing them yell. So I got up mad and flung the door open to tell them to knock that shit off. Well, when I opened the door, I looked down the hallways and up the stairs and noticed a small girl at the top of the stairs in a formal white dress. I stared for about five seconds then nope, 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 and closed the door. I wanted to see if this said thing was still there, but I didn't want to open the door and realize it's standing right in front of the door or some shit you see in horror movies. So I grabbed my phone and called my little brother hoping he was still awake and had not dozed off watching TV. When he answered, I told him to come to the office to check out the sweet double headshot I got, so I hear his footsteps coming from the den. When he comes in the door, I just say, oh never mind, and start walking towards the den really fast. I didn't tell anyone until the morning because it sounded made up, but I have plenty more paranormal witnesses from that house, my mom's old house, and my dad's new house. Here's a second story. Same house, I was asleep in my room on the second floor. This takes place about two weeks after the first incident. So after the second week, I just assumed what I saw was my imagination because of lack of sleep. So I was playing COD Modern Warfare 2 online in my room. It was about 2 a.m. Older brother was out of my mom's house and my little brother had dozed off on bed behind me. So the TV is set up so it's next to my door. So after about two hours of straight online gameplay, I hear footsteps coming up the stairs. I assumed it was my dad telling me to turn down my TV, but halfway through I thought, why wouldn't he just call me on my phone to tell me instead of getting out of bed and coming all the way upstairs? So I just anticipated the door to open. I quit the current game I was playing and turned the, down the TV before he would even ask. I just said, out loud, alright, it's turned down. I hear the footsteps stop. I don't hear any going back downstairs. I wanted to open the door to see if anything was standing on the stairs or something. I was just, eh, should I? I had music playing and the game was on the menu screen. I just stared at the door waiting for my dad to open it. It pops open a little and after a good like 5 minutes, nothing. Another 5 minutes, nothing. Then the door just swings open very hard but stops at a halt before it hits the wall so no noise was made. I get up, slide my brother's phone across the hallway into his room. I then call it and hide my phone. I wake my brother up to tell him his phone is ringing. He gets up and asks what his phone is doing on the other room. I just say, I don't know, maybe he left it there. I end up going to sleep about 10 minutes later. Fast forward to the morning, my dad comes in the room to tell me he's leaving to work and if I need anything to call him. I ask him why he barely opened the door last night and just left. He says he never came upstairs. I just dismiss him because mainly I didn't want to think about it. My dad heads downstairs and I hear him start the car and take off. He left my door open just a little. I fear I feel pressure on the edge of the bed, like if someone would have sat down. I thought it was my little brother about to play the Xbox or something and wanted to sit on my bed. Then the pressure was gone as if he had gotten up and then the door just slammed shut really hard. I got up pissed as hell to go and tell my brother to cut that shit out. When I open the door, I have a direct view downstairs to the hallway to my dad's office. 
I see the same little thing standing in front of the office door. I slowly close the door and turn on the TV because for some reason I thought if you have sound in the room, the ghosts just leave. I yell for my brother's name and he comes running upstairs thinking something just happened. I just asked him where's my phone. He pointed it out and we went downstairs together. I told him what I saw and he just shrugged it off. I still have more though. Third story. Fast forward two years, my dad moves into a new three-story house downtown, historical home in Texas that was one of the largest ranches at one point. First floor was the usual living room, kitchen, office, bathroom, shit like that. Second was my room, brother's room, bathroom, parents' room. Third floor was my dad's man cave where he would smoke his bongs and whatnot and watch movies and man cave things. I set up my Xbox in there because it had the biggest TV. So the layout on the third floor is like a room with the back part of the room leveled up so you could set up a couch there so when you watch a movie, the couch in front of the TV will block the view. It has three small attics up there to connecting to the walls. Two in the back and one to the left of the TV. So I loaded up Battlefield and during the loading screen, you know how it turns black and the little loading blue bar just shows up on the screen at the bottom right? So I could see the reflection of everything behind me every time the loading screen would show up. So after one of the online matches, the loading screen popped up and I saw the reflection of the TV to the back of the room and one of the back attic doors had opened up a little along with a little squeak. I just got up and slowly closed the door and put a blank blanket on the bottom of the door. This was so it wouldn't open easily. Another few minutes, the loading screen comes on again and the other attic door pops open behind me. I was in nope 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 mode. But I played it cool because I didn't want was whatever was in there to now I was freaked out, just to freak me out even more. I grabbed another blanket and did the same thing to the store. The only attic door was left was the one to the left of the TV, which was in my view. After about 30 minutes or so, this one just flew open making a loud ass bang. I saw a small shadow figure standing in the back of the attic room. I just got up casually, put the controller down and walked down the stairs very calm and cool didn't look back once and once the door was in front of me to leave the third floor to the second floor I became using bolt and just bolted the fuck out of the third floor down the second floor into the kitchen and outside the house and played with my dogs for a while story number four this takes place at my mom's old house one night me and my brother stayed up watching whammy plus and lingo on gsn it was getting really late and we didn't want to go back to our room so my brothers went and got blankets so they could sleep on the couch. Only having two couches I was left to sleep on the floor. I went and grabbed a small floor mat to sleep on the floor with. And about one hour in my brothers fell asleep leaving me watching TV by myself. I was pretty excited knowing that they were asleep knowing I could sneak a peek at some late night adult movies on HBO. So I turned the volume down on the TV so they wouldn't hear anything. As I'm reaching for the remote, I see a reflection in the kitchen. I thought maybe my parents were watching TV and it was the light from the TV or something. I noticed my mom's room was closed, so I then came to the conclusion that it must have been a car parked outside on the side street with its headlights on coming through the windows or something. The light turned into an orb and started floating closer to me in a swaying motion. Oh, uh, it would flow really slow. I froze up, unable to speak or move, and I got goosebumps all over my body and my hair started to stand up on my skin. It's a really shitty feeling, like could you hear me making noises trying to scream for my brothers to wake up. The orb got about 10 feet from me and made shape into a man wearing a suit, wearing with a hat. I couldn't make out a face, but he did have a beard. He stood there in the dining room just staring at me. Went on for about 10 seconds, but it felt like a lifetime. He just walked into my brother's room and I was able to move again. I just flipped shit this time and I didn't make any quick excuse to wake someone up. I shook my brothers telling them to wake the fuck up and just yelled for my mom. I told them what happened. My mom cleared things up with me telling me I have nothing to worry about. My great grandpa had lived in the house before we moved in and he had passed away in his sleep in my brother's room. I went on to see him about two more times. Once in the doorway of my room and another one I was leaving the kitchen and he was sitting in a chair in the dining room.
Six. The ill suicidal libel, the take titles and make vital signs, but not like no cancer. Answer, there's no chance to advance to ya. Cool ya, got blazed through ya. The great super science, applying pressure, I desecrate with double lows and bubble folds while I cut you, bro. I juggle flows that goes ballistic, reminiscent of exquisite cannibalistics and a sadistic doctor. My sick shit knocks ya, improper, got clock.